folks, the old fisherman back with you. On today's show, we're going to go out on Lake Monticello, and we're going to focus on some white perch, deep water, uh, clear conditions, so they skylight the jigs. You can catch two and three at a time. I love it when you catch two or three at a time. We use the three rig, and I've told you all before about the three rig. I take a little small swivel, double lines, one about 12 inches, then we go down to another swivel about 24 inches, and uh, we'll tie another line off of it. So we got uh, two swivels and two lines coming off, uh, off of each swivel. You see the first swivel and then the second swivel and a little short line. And then we go down to another jig with a lead above it. I like to use a number five or seven lead, sometimes a number four, depending on how deep I'm fishing. And, that, and I like to use one eight arky heads, round heads. And we use a uh, loose reel. Uh, it's a MS-100 loose reel, and we got 20-pound braid line on this one. And uh, it's the Pro, uh, Power Pro braid line smoke color on this one. But uh, on the at the first swivel, we drop off the monofilament. I like to use 8, 10, or 12. Sometimes I go to 12, but the smaller you use, the better they seem to bite it and uh, the better it works. You don't want to jerk it a lot because it might get tangled up on you and tie it in knots. So I basically drop it to the bottom and reel it up slow at angles. And sometimes I'll slow troll it around in a circle. Uh, and that's the way I uh, present these jigs for them white perch. And today we was in, in anywhere from 30 to 45 foot of water catching them. And I'm going to show you the uh, slider jigs, the way I like to set it up. I got a little arc head right here, 1 8 ounce. And uh, 8 ounce works real well for this jig. It's an inch and a half jig. And I like to tail down. And that's the way I slide it on right there. And I like the tail down. Y'all see the tail down. I like that. That's the way I do it. And uh, hey, we're using the Charlie Brewer. And this is the uh, Tennessee Shad Color inch and a half Charlie Brewer. And I'll turn it around. You can see Tennessee Shad Color right there. And uh, hey, and we also like the dark ones. Sometimes black, sometimes blue with chartreuse or green. We try them all. This is the crappy grub black chartreuse tail. Is what this one is. Slider jigs, Charlie Brewer slider. Hey, but anyhow, go with us today. Hope you enjoy the show. Appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks to all of you and the great uh, comments on my show. I love fishing with you, and I hope you love fishing with the old fishermen. Hey, if you like us, hit the like button and uh, and go to stevecumlana.com if you need a t-shirt or a hat, what have you. Uh, we got some stuff on our, on our website. Don't know how much longer, probably another year. We'll keep that going. But uh, hey, the more sales, the better. And we appreciate you. And make sure you tell your friends about the old fishermen and subscribe. We appreciate it. But thanks for going. Hey, let's go fishing on Lake Monticello uh, last week. Uh, one of my videos. We'll see you. Good morning, folks. Hey, the old fisherman back with you. We got a boat really close to us, so I'm going to talk low at first. Hey, I'm on Lake Monticello. Trying to catch some really doggone white perch. Try to get this camera right. And uh, hopefully we can get some today. biting it's gonna oh already got a bite first jerk that's a good sign that's a good sign it's cloudy really overcast today and uh and it looks like it's gonna rain I caught my jig already oh going let's see if I can find a nothing like that But uh, anyhow, glad y'all could be with me. We're using a uh, three slider jigs this morning, different colors, inch and a half slider jigs on one eighth ounce heads with a three rig. Got, got uh, two swivels and lines coming off of it, making three jigs. 
with a lid right before you get to the bottom. That's to help it get down, help it not tangle up. What I'm doing, we got a boat that's drifting right up to us. But, hey, nothing I can do about it Saturday morning. I think they kept fishing. But anyhow, let's see if we catch some. Might be a good day, might not be a good day. Sometimes on cloudy days I have a hard time, but today the water's falling. Water's way down. Now, I don't know, you never know with this lake. It might eat it up. See, I bleed it biting. I bleed it biting. Drop down twice, you got two bites, that's a good sign. That's a nice one too. Right there. That is a nice one. We got windy condition and cool weather. And look like they're hitting the dog on uh, uh, blue ice and green. That boat that's coming right up to me is drifting with the wind. And it just so happened the wind is right straight toward me. And that's not a good sign because they're going to see me catching them. They see me catching them, they'll probably want to fish here. And the fish are here too. They here. They bite. That is. They bite. I tell you that right now. They bite. They bite. Back down, see if we get a nothing. Both getting closer and closer and closer. You'll be on top of them in a minute. I might have to let y'all go and start you back up. They down there too. I mean they really down there. They down there big time. Getting bites. I hate to pull them up when I'm looking. A little. I might be drifting for catfish. They're hot. Fish are hot down there this morning. I wish that boat went around me. I mean, they're really down there. They're really biting. We might turn y'all off that boat gets by. I can't sit here and catch three at a time with that boat looking. I'll tell you that right now.
I'm gonna let y'all go up here right back with you. Hey folks, old fisherman back with you. We're on Lake Monticello. And uh, we're gonna try to catch a few fish here today. It's in uh, cloudy conditions. Hopefully we can get a couple to bite. Early in the morning, it looks like rain any time. We have 39 foot of water. We're using a uh, slider jigs, and uh, we're gonna see if we can stir something up down there. He is. He is. That's a good one. That's a good one. That is a good one. That's a nut. Hey, I think we got two. I think we got two. How about three? Three at a time. Look at that. Three at a time. Three at a time. You got to love three at a time. See right there? Three at a time. Late Monticello catching doggone white perch. Look at him. Look at that sucker right there. That's a nice one. That ain't no bad one right there. See that? Ain't no bad one. Drop it back out and we get another. See if we can get another. Drop it to the bottom where the big boys lie. Glad y'all could be with me on another episode of Loving Life. Hey, it's fish stirring out here this morning. I can see them. They there. And they good ones too. They good ones too. They on fire. Oh my, they on fire. They on fire. Look at that, two at a time, jumbo magnum. Look at that, huh? Two at a time, jumbo magnum. I'm talking about nice fish right here. You're talking nice fish right here. Look at him. Look at that, that fish. That's a pretty one, isn't it? Pretty pretty. We're using an H2O Express rod, six foot eight inches uh, long. It's a it's a, a Ellis rod, and we got fish all up under us on the fish finder. They they they're from top to the bottom. I don't know if there's any bass being here today. This is where I've been catching a lot of bass, but there's a lot of perch out there. I'll tell you that a lot of them overcast and they bite. The water's low. And they really bite. Hey, we got two at a time. Two at a time right here. Come here, two at a time. Two at a time. You got to love it. We're gonna catch up a mess right quick here today. I like these rods so much, I got two of them. I got a little Mitchell on this one. And drop it to the bottom where the big boys lie. I got uh, a 20 pound test uh, braid on this particular rod here. And uh, it's done lighten up, it's been on so long, it's done got kind of white looking. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea to take a black magic marker down there close to the jigs, and, which I go to monofilament, but a uh, black magic marker you can take sometimes and rub it on the line, darken it up a little bit. How long they gonna bite? But there's something out there. There's something out there. There's nice ones too. They're good perch. Good perch. If they stay here, we gonna catch them. Them bass might show up. I can tell you that. They might show up. He is way up high. They suspended. Really suspended because it's cloudy. They hitting way on up. That's a small one. Isn't it? Oh, now. Throw him back. We got a, a blue ice on a black head. Now I'll show it to you. We got a blue ice with a lid in between and to the next jig, and then we go up to the swivel, and then we've got another swivel up way on up there a couple foot, dropping about a 12 inch line off of that one. My three rig. Drop it to the bottom where the big boys lie. Hey, good luck to the Gamecocks today. They gonna probably need it. Got Alabama and the Gamecocks at 3.30. I'll be sitting there watching. I love my college football. And then Clemson plays tonight. Hey, if you hadn't got your Carolina 
Old Fisherman T-shirt or your Clemson Old Fisherman T-shirt, go to stevecumberland.com to buy them. Uh, got them online. They're not expensive. Twelve bucks for the regular size, I think, and uh, fourteen for the bigger one, the big sizes. There you go. What are you biting? I tell you that. Not hitting the dark blue or the black. Thirty-nine foot of water right now. I got it on spot lock because the wind's blowing. I put it on there just to, for them people to drive by to get on out of the way. And uh, we had a boat just drift right by us within 20 yards. They was they was drifting for catfish. They bumping if they ain't taking. And they there. Kind of slowing up on me. They're bumping at it, but they ain't taking this one. This one. This one. I'd like to get me another one in the big small mouth for that was fun. That was a little fish right there. He hit the blue. Kind of a little, uh. Got back out and got another one. Pretty nice, that might be a bass. I don't believe that's a bass. Oh yeah, look at that. That's an old bass and a perch. Bass and a perch. Here I am with out my net. I'm ready again. Bass and a perch. Bass and a perch. I knew that bass and a perch. Hey, come here, boy. Nice perch, too, if I can get him in the boat. Nice perch and a bass. Look at that. Nice perch and a bass, what I mean. I'm the boat. in the lower part of the boat. Pull them up here. Huh? Look at him. Oh, careful. Careful. Look at a nice bass and a, and a perch. I tell you what, they want that jig reeling up, don't they? It sure makes a difference what you use. Y'all see that. Can't get a bite the other way and then knock the devil out of this one. What you got on makes a difference, baby. You can see that. Come in three at a time. Couldn't get them to bite that double rig with that spoon. But come in three at a time like this. Amazing, ain't it? Plumb amazing. It just goes to prove they don't bite everything. You got to give them what they want, then you got to put the presentation on it like they want. What you got to do to catch these fish. Uh oh, got a mess right here. What happened? Big time mess. and tie this up in a knot. Somebody asked me on the show how I keep it from tying in a knot. Well, I don't. But, I mean, I, I try to put the heavier jig heads on that, and that helps. But ever so often, if you jerk it a lot, you're going to get a knot. 
And so I like to just reel it. That keeps the knots down, just reeling it. So you drop it to the bottom, and that lead then there right before that last G holds it, uh, separates them a lot, a lot better, and they don't twist up as bad. But if you do a lot of jerking with a G on it, you gonna stay hung up, uh, twisted up nice. Especially if you don't have at least an eighth ounce head. If you got a sixteenth ounce head, a little smaller, it'll be a constant knot. It's the way it works. But let me tell you, it it works, so you got to deal with it. Sometimes everything don't work perfect to make it, to make it happen. You got to deal with the knots. I don't have that many, y'all see it, because I don't jerk it up and down very much. And that lid right before it gets to that top bottom jig, a quarter ounce head on the bottom would be even better. But the problem is some of them quarter ounce heads are a little bit big for these little small jigs. If you're using a big jig, it ain't make no difference. But they hit small, and that's why these small jigs are so good. Catch three at a time, then can't get a bite. You know something? Amazes me. Amazes me. That's what happens, though. They leave. They get spooky. Kind of like shooting a dozen on a dove field. After the first season, they spooky. These fish the same way. You pound, uh, if you catch a bunch of them, same place over and over, they get spooky. <coughs> That's the way it works. We ain't on them right now. I can tell you when I'm fixing to get a bite. Right now, I don't see them. Move up a little bit. You gotta move around to get back on. They moving. They running this drop out here on the edge of this one. I think it suckers it up high is what I think. Every time I go to move one, it pops it. When I get it off the bottom, there comes some. There comes some. Go out of it. I'm making the ball in. Let's drop it back down right there on that drop. We're coming up a toe. And that's where they like to hang on them drops now. Okay? Right there, 36 foot. Boy, it's a pleasant day. They have two, they ain't hot yet. Days like this be good for the football team this afternoon. It'll probably break off and get hot as the devil. What'll probably happen about the football time. They is. They up. They suspend it, and that's where they at. They ain't on the bottom. They suspend it. Catching these fish suspended. Swimming them jigs up through that suspended jig uh, fish. That's what we doing. Y'all can see that. Spinning fish. Now there's a pile of them. 41 foot. Pile of them. <coughs> well, Miss Deborah's a little bit better each day now. I hope we're on the on road to recovery. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I just don't know about that. What we don't even know what, what happened. So but somehow or another, she's lifting something and messed her back up. Her daddy had back problems. She might be inherited this, I don't know. He was always hunched over with back problems. Always. For years, he dealt with it. That's old age, a lot of times you just gotta deal with stuff. It's hard to accept you ain't gonna feel like you did when you were younger when things start going wrong. Hard to accept that. So your pain level of tolerance you got you got to get it's got to get up. I heard all the time. I just try to go fishing and not think about it. Mind control will help you a lot. You accept the fact that you're gonna have a lot of pain, just deal with it and go on. A lot of people can't do that. I could go have ankle surgery, hernia surgery, shoulder surgery, and then what? I got back problems too, hip problems. I ain't got time for all them surgeries. That knocks my years off my life. I'd rather just struggle with a little pain, keep going. That's the way I am. 
I, I like the idea of being able to come out here and catch these fish. You get tied up with all the surgery stuff, you ain't coming out here and catch no fish. All you're gonna do is lay in the laser bar and go downhill in the therapy and stuff like that. I'd rather my therapy it'd be these fish catching. Y'all can see I can do it, and I do love it. Look at that one. Three doggone big old, oh, one got off. One of them got off, but one of them is a jumbo, super supreme. You see him on the blue ice right there, G. Look at that size of that perch. People, that's the kind I was catching when I first started fishing in here. Well, when I first started making videos, this lake was slam full. When I finally figured out how to catch these fish, it was slam full because a lot of people didn't know how to catch them. All they know how to do is bump the bottom. Drop back out and we got a dog on another one on. I think I got a few down there. We can catch them. Might have two on. Might have three. I don't know. Well, yeah, we got three big ones. Look at him. Three at a time. Lake Monticello. Look at him. Look at the size of them babies. Them was good ones there. Them was the kind we've been looking for right now. Three at a time. You go and catch a nut in a three at a time. Ain't that something? Look at the size of these suckers. Look at the size of them. Pretty perch. Look at that. Because they was good. And all three of them was magnet uh, jumbos. Might not have been a magnum, but they were jumbos. Hey, let's get it back out there and see if we can keep them going. That's the key. We got some down there. Let's keep them going. 36 foot of water. That is the key, my friend. See what we can do. There he is. There he is. Hey, there he is. I see we get three more. Let it sit down there a little bit. Might get a several. Stir them up, so to say. I right, stir in the pot. All right. <clears throat> see what we got. Two at a time. Two at a time. They bunch of them coming in now. They get stirred up. They get stirred up. Doing. All right, drop it to the bottom where the big boys lie. I'll tell you, they like the anger. I got it on spot lock, and that ain't, that ain't the best way to have it. Like that angle. They ain't taking it now. Doggone it. Flip it out, let it go down, bring it in the angle. Let's see what happens. Beat the boat some more. Come in spurts, you catch a couple and they quit. They won't stay under you. They just will not stay under you. They're gone. Take it off spot lock. Catch today, they're not staying with me. Catch two or three at a time and then bump they go. There you go. They like the angle though, you got to give it an angle. If you don't put the angle on them, you ain't catching them. I'll tell you that right now. I suck it. smart. They get smart in their old ladies. Look at that. Nice perch though. They're good ones. You got to have an angle. Without an angle, you ain't going to catch them. Not a lot of them. You might catch some. Pull up my jig.
doggone it. I mean, tore it up. We might catch one more on it. Drop it down. Get that angle back on them. They lay in tight to that bottom. When I, when I start stirring them up, they come up and feed. There he is. There he is. Got him that time. Ain't but one, though. Pretty nice one, though. Good size. Not a jumbo magnum, but he's a, he's big enough. To eat. I tell you, they ain't they biting that white G. They ain't biting that black G. Come off of that. They ain't biting that black G. They biting the white G. I'm thinking we need to put another white jig on. Let's put another light colored jig on. We got plenty of them. I'll tell you that much. I bought three packs of them. We're using a slider jig. One and a half inches long. Charlie Brewer slider jig. Charlie Brewer is the style we use. Drop it to the bottom with a big boy's line. Beat the boat a little bit. We got some down there. I can tell you that right now. You got to put that slant on it, though. Wind blowing makes it hard. Slant is the key. But there's fish all over the bottom. Got to make them bite. Nothing. Come on, boys. They slow down. Ooh, we hit it. They slow them because of the cloudy weather. There you go. He nailed it. He nailed it. Right slant, one at a time though. Oh, don't you see this perch I just caught? I turned the camera off and caught this monster perch. Look at the size of that one. That is a big one, isn't it? That joker, that weighs a pound and a quarter. That is a long gated, doggone perch. Look at the size of that perch. That's a big one, isn't it? I'm going to pull another place, and uh, I believe we got a few fish out here. I got something on right now. <clears throat> nice one. I think we got a few fish out here. See so if we can get him in. Oh, it might be a largemouth. I think it might be a largemouth. That chuck is up down on the motor. I know that. I'll be low. Oh, yeah, it's a largemouth. It's a largemouth. Look at that. He jumped off. Spit it out. He was about a four pound large mouth. We had two perch on too. Sure was. Spit it out. That happens an awful lot with these jigs. They'll spit it out. I was gonna throw him back in anyhow. That second large mouth we had on today. Hey, maybe we'll catch some out here. I've been trying to get out here. The boat's out here all morning. And they left and just like the other day, I come on and back where they was at. Up into the day, about 10 o'clock, they like to this is a good area to catch them about 10 o'clock. All the time it happens like that. You see, when we get a nothing, get it down, you get a bite. Might stir them up, beat the boat. There he is. There he is. Here goes a nothing. 
There goes a nut. There goes a nut. Got a bunch of them out there. A bunch of them. Three of them right there. Three at a time. Three at a time, people. One big one. One jumbo super supreme, too. Your size of that baby. Super Supreme. Drop back down so we get another one. Drop back out and we got another one on. I see something down there. We got three. Three nice ones at one time. Look at that. Three at a time again. Them jokers are out there now. We just got to get on them right and catch them. They out there. Them three good ones too. Three at a time. You got to love that. Drop it back out, see if we get another one. Lake Monticello. Turn the boat. Wind's blowing me so hard I can't, can't hardly hold it. There he is. There he is. There he is. See if we get another one. Let's see if we can get another one. I don't know. I don't feel like it yet. I have to. I don't know, to get a little bit stronger. I might have several. Might have several. Oh yeah, we got three. Three at a time, look at that. How about that, folks? Three at a time. You gotta love them three at a time. One of them, one of them is a throwbacker. Get on back, boy. Three at a time. I might tore up my jig. I'm gonna leave it up there though. Drop it back down, see if we can get some more. Loving life, old fisherman. Eat the boat, bring them in. Got to go for a long, I want to clean these fish and get set down for the ball game. Got barbecue for supper, made some hash out of a uh, Boston butt and a uh, we barbecued some Boston butts at Randy Cease's house. Uh, my son-in-law's father-in-law. Oh, Lord, that's a good one. That's a good one. My son's father-in-law is what I'm trying to say. Got that as a bass right there. That's a, that's a good bass right there. Better get the net ready. Better get the net ready. That's a bass right there. I might keep me a bass today because me and Miss Deborah's going to bake some fish. Ain't no bass. Doggone perch in the hiney. That junker felt just like both of them on it. Felt just like a doggone bass. Yeah, I am getting a net out for a little tiny perch. What? Fool me. I don't get fooled often. Y'all know that. I can tell you about most of the time what I got on when I stick it. That and that fooled me. He thumped it, and apparently that, that thump was the other one that bit. And when I set the hook, I caught the one in the back. Just timing. Uh, unless, I don't know, I could have had the bass on this thing he got off. Because it's tore up and flipped up, so I could have had three. Bass might have got off. I believe that was a bass on there. I believe that bass got off right when I went to pick it up to see what I, what I had on. That's what I think happened. That's all right. Me and Miss Deborah's going to bait some fish this week. They tell me you can take a filet, striper, largemouth, and uh, take Parmesan cheese and breadcrumbs, uh, three parts breadcrumbs, one part Parmesan cheese, and get it wet and make a paste, and spread it all over them filets on the bottom and the, and the top, and put them in the oven in a, in a dish, and put a little bit of olive oil in there, and uh, bake them for about, that's a good one, 30, 35 minutes, I think they said, on 350. And so they're really good. I hadn't tried that yet, but we're going to give that a shot. They're all over the bottom, stuck to the bottom. Oh, there you go. He nailed it. He nailed it. Uh -oh. He nailed it. There goes another. 
There goes a nun. I know I got two. I ain't sure about three. No? Yeah, I got two. Two at a time. Like I said earlier, I don't know if I'll cut that part, but a lot of times I'll trim stuff and leave out some good stuff. I'm using a Tennessee uh, Chad Cullet slider inch and a half G is what I'm using. And I'll show you the packs that come in. Tennessee Shad Color inch and a half uh, slider company jigs. I'll put them on my uh, uh, description and uh, the phone number to buy these from Slider is 800-762-4701. And they got the phone number on their packs. And I call Slider, they supposed to send me, uh, not Slider, I'm, I'm, yeah, Charlie Brewer Slider is what I'm trying to say. They supposed to send me some, some packs of, of different styles for me to try out and talk about. We'll see if that happens. But uh, nice people. But anyhow, I think you can make an order with that number. All right, let's drop it back down to the bottom. We got 12 pound test line in between our lines today. I don't like to use that bigger line, but hey, it's working. It might give us an opportunity to catch a big bass if we're hooking without breaking off. We'll hook two of them. I know we can catch one. I don't have a problem catching one on four pound tests. I take my time. The problem is when you get two on the same time, they, they're surging against each other and they'll break off. That's the problem. All right, all we're gonna do, it's kind of calming down a little bit. Hey, they might make, they might make them go to bite more. Lighten it up a little bit, but it's still kind of gloomy out here today. But there's fish all over the bottom. I barely can see them on the bottom. They ain't stirring up. That's what it is. They're not stirring up like they have been. There you go. But they're hitting way up. Way up. Y'all notice the bites I'm getting halfway up. Whether they following it up and hitting it or whether they, some of them up there suspended. I ain't sure. Hey, ain't got but one at a time, but he's a nice one. He's a nice one. Hey, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. See if we get a nut in the bite it. Let him swim around out there. See if we get a nut in the bite it. Oh, yeah. Three at a time. See that? They have two of them little. And that might be why I ain't catching them. It's little. Two of them throwbackers. Oh, he bit my doggone tail off. Got one keeper out right the bunt. One keeper. I bit my tail off, but I'm gonna leave that new jig on, drop down, and as soon as I did, one nailed it. I gotta learn to turn the camera on before I drop down. Let's see what we got. Three at a time.